Hello everyone, my name is Randy, and today we will be discussing Latuda or Loracidone for generic. Here are the table of contents. We'll first discuss what Latuda is used for and their, their respective dosing. Second, we'll discuss the dosing adjustments that are made in hepatic or kidney failure. Third, we'll discuss how the medication works. Fourth, we'll discuss what to monitor when the patient is on the medication. And lastly, we'll discuss what to consult the patient on when they come to pick up the medication. So, indication and dosing. What is Latuda used for? Latuda is only FDA approved for the use in schizophrenia, but off-label, it may be used for bipolar major depression and major depressive disorder. First, we'll discuss the only FDA approved indication of schizophrenia. The initial dosing of Latuda is 40 milligrams by mouth once in the evening within 30 minutes of a meal with greater than or equal to 350 calories. Based on the patient's response, the medication may be titrated up every three or more days by increment of 40 milligrams. Generally, patients on this medication take anywhere from 40 to 80 milligrams, but the max dose is 160 milligrams. <clears throat> For bipolar major depression, Latuda does not treat episodes of mania. However, it may be used in combination with other anti-manic therapy. If used as monotherapy for either acute bipolar depression or maintenance for depressive dis episodes, the initial dose is 20 milligrams by mouth every evening within 30 minutes of food that is greater than or equal to 350 calories. Titrate by 20 milligrams every two or more days with a max dose of 120 milligrams a day. For major depressive disorder, the initial dose is 20 milligrams by mouth in the morning within 30 minutes of food that is greater than or equal to 350 calories for 7 days. Titrate by 20 milligrams every 2 to 7 days with the max dose being 60 milligrams a day. So mechanism of action. How does Latuda work? The activity of Latuda is not fully understood, however, what we know is that it belongs to the benzisothiazole class of medications and affects the dopamine indicated by D2 and serotonin indicated by 5-HT receptors in the graphic. On the next slide, we'll break it down. Loracidone is a full antagonist of the dopamine D2 and serotonin 5-HT2A or 7 receptors and is a partial agonist of the serotonin 5-HT1A receptor. Compared to other atypical antipsychotics, loracidone has the highest binding affinity to 5-HT7, antagonism of 5-HT7, and partial agonism of 5-HT1A contributes to the antidepressant effects of loracidone. Loracidone also has low activity on muscarinic M1, histamine H1, Alpha-1 and 2A adrenergic receptors, which minimize the risk of orthostatic hypotension, sedation, weight gain, and cognitive blunting, generally associated with antipsychotics. On to patient monitoring. There are a few things that we would monitor on patients using atypical antipsychotics or antipsychotics in general. For all monitoring parameters, it is appropriate to check at baseline and when clinically relevant. There's a long list of monitoring parameters when considering initiating loracidone. Many of them are shared among antipsychotic medications. If we work our way from top down during every visit, patients are to be tested for adherence, mental status, tardive dyskinesia, vital signs, and fall risk. For EPS symptoms, it must be evaluated every visit, four weeks after initiation, and after each dosage change. When measuring EPS symptoms, use a formalized rating scale, at least annually or every six months if the patient is high risk. Extra pyramidal symptoms could include repetitive involuntary facial movements and restlessness. Moving down to check 8 and 12 weeks after initiation, after a dosage change, or quarterly, we want to check the patient's height, weight, and BMI as antipsychotics may result in metabolic changes. It is possible to consider monitoring waist circumference at baseline and annually. Consider changing the medication if BMI increases greater than or equal to one unit. 12 weeks after initiation, dosage change, and annually, it is recommended to check HbA1c and lipids and check more frequently if they are out of range. Annually, 
check Chem7, metabolic syndrome, renal, liver, and thyroid function. And lastly, for as-needed labs, CBC is checked frequently during the first few months of initiating therapy only for patients with pre-existing low white blood cell count or history of drug-induced leukopenia or neutropenia. On to patient consultation. The medication name is loracidone or Latuda. This medication is associated with increased risk of death by infection or heart disease in older adults who take this drug for mental problems caused by dementia. It can also increase the risk of suicidal thoughts or actions in children and young adults. Thus, if the patient is feeling any of these symptoms, please consult them to reach out for help or consult the family to look out for signs of depression, nervousness, restlessness, or any other mood disturbances. This medication is used to treat schizophrenia, bipolar depression, and major depressive disorder. Before taking this medication, the patient should let the doctor know of any allergies pertaining to this medication, as well as if they are taking any antivirals, antibiotics, or antiepileptics as these medications interact with loracidone. When on this medication, patients should avoid driving or actions that require alertness. This medication can cause dizziness or fainting. Take caution when getting up or laying down as moving too fast may cause this. Complete any lab tests recommended by the doctor as this medication may affect the metabolism. Avoid grapefruit juice and alcohol on this drug. This medication may decrease white blood cell counts leading to increased risk of infection and in older adults with dementia. This medication increases the risk of stroke. If the patient is pregnant or planning for pregnancy, notify the patient that the use of this medication may lead to side effects or withdrawal in the newborn, so contact the doctor to see if any therapeutic interchanges need to be made. Some side effects to be concerned about leading to a consult with the doctor are high blood sugar with symptoms such as confusion, sleepiness, unusual thirst, or hunger. Some other side effects to consult the doctor are abnormal heartbeat, seizures or fainting, uncontrollable movements, or breast or erection changes. Side effects that are to be expected are restlessness, excitation, and weight gain. This drug is taken with food, particularly with greater than or equal to 350 calories and with lots of non-caffeinated liquids. If a dose is missed, take it immediately with food, and if it is near the next dose, skip the missed dose and continue as scheduled. Here are my references. Thank you for your time.